everybody. Welcome in. Today I'm going to share with you something that I like and really enjoy doing to some of my rocks and that's giving them a nice base coat. Um, sometimes this is good to do with a uh, rougher rocks or just if the design warrants having a base coat underneath. Next week is uh, Mardi Gras masks. So I really wanted to start with some black base coated long skinny rocks for my Mardi Gras masks. But whenever I base coat, I always do a whole bunch of rocks at the same time. So I'm just gonna go right into how I create my mix and show you a few coats and then we'll get out of here today. So. First, all you have to do is make your base coating contraptions. Now, I'm using recycled tubs that I just had around the house. Um, you're gonna need a wide enough opening for the size of your rock. So for larger rocks, you'll need something with a wider opening. If you're just basing coating uh, smaller rocks, something with a smaller opening will work just as well. And that one is here on the right. Now I've gone around the outside edge and punched a few different hole punches on the side. That way I can adjust my skewers to different widths for different size rocks so that you have a nice solid base to put your rock on that you're gonna base coat. Now I'm gonna get another little one over here ready to go. Now what I do to create my paint so that it flows really nice is I take acrylic paint and I water it down a little bit. Now I don't buy the cheapest brand of acrylic paint so when you're creating your mix you're gonna want to test once or twice for your amounts but I did measure today and I have about a tablespoon and a half of water in here and the rest of it is paint. And the best thing about this is A, you're saving money because you're not using as much paint and B, it really flows over the edges nice and it will actually tuck underneath a little bit. And you're catching all this paint below. So don't worry if you feel like you're squirting way more than you need. It's better to get it over all the edges and I'll show you how easy it is to just collect this paint back up out of your tubs. See, I'm almost to the bottom of this because I had done a few before this. Oh, no, there's still some in there. Get this one here. There we go. So I cover them a little bit with paint. I let the excess kind of drip off down into the bottom. And once it's done dripping, then I move it onto a piece of parchment paper. Now parchment paper works really well because the paint won't absorb into it at all. So you won't have to worry about peeling it off like cardboard or paper or something like that. The paper's gonna stick. As it's drying, I always take a popsicle stick and I give it a little bit of a nudge back and forth. And the reason I do this is you'll see there's a little bit of black paint. Oh, I'm out of your frame. Hold on. I'll scoot this back for a second. You see there's a little bit of black paint underneath the rock. So if you give it a nudge back and forth a couple times while it's still wet, it will help kind of cover that back side of the rock as long as the back side of your rock is flat. And I'll show you the back side of a couple rocks. I had to search around for one that I hadn't actually hid. So here's one that I had painted. It's dry. See, this is the back side. Yeah, it's not super smooth. You're not going to use this on um, a 360 style rock, but this is just a great beginner's technique. This is perfect because it's a thinner coat of paint. I hide most of my rocks, so I'm not gonna sit and spend a lot of money to base coat acrylic paint on here. Now, if you're selling rocks, you might wanna go a different route, but this works great for what I'm using them for. So if you do you know, base coat your rocks like this, before you start painting the tops, this is something that I learned recently, you can give the back side of your rock a spray with your um, clear acrylic finish. And that way, when you're doing your final spray, you don't have to worry about flipping the design face down and possibly messing it up. So I'm gonna take these off. They didn't even need to sit here that long. I was just chatting. So we're gonna take these two off and we're gonna put it down. And we did have a little bit more paint in here, but I just wanna show you how easy it is you know, to get this paint back out. I cut a little notch in the side, oop, in the side of my container here to make it easier to pour. So you just take your skewers back out of your containers and you just open up your paint. And I do this with white paint as well. And you just pour the extra paint back in. And that's why I don't worry about how much I'm squirting on top because I'm constantly pouring it back into my container. And you'll get quite a few rocks 
out of a small amount of paint. And you can let the kids help with this because my kids love painting it. My daughter thinks it looks like putting glaze on donuts. I don't know, maybe I can see that a little bit. But she really enjoys the process of squirting the paint all over the rocks. So I'm just gonna do a couple more here with you. Can any other paper work? Um, as long, because parchment paper isn't really paper. It's got a, a slick surface to it. I'm assuming wax paper would probably work okay. Um, foil would probably work okay. You just don't want anything that's gonna absorb the paint. Because if it absorbs the paint, you're gonna be peeling you know, paper off the back side of your rock. I mean, we don't wanna do that. That's a whole extra step that you don't wanna do. So I'm gonna show you, I, I left those first ones on a little bit longer than normally would. So just kind of around the edge and in the middle. And like I said, don't worry about how much you're using. The main thing I like to try to do once you get that inside is go along the outside so it kind of curls underneath the edge of the rock. And I didn't put my other ones on there. So just let it sit there and drip and you'll be able to see it dripping from the side. Here, I'll bring this in a little bit closer for you. There we go. And you'll see it kind of dripping. Once that initial bit of drips, you can give it a little shake if you want to. Then I go ahead and take it down and start on, on the next one. So. It's not really a long process, but it will save you a good amount of paint. And I just buy the giant, you know, big size paints of black. Oop, I guess I was kind of in front of the black and white. And that way they last a really long time for base coating my rocks. I'll get one more started here. So if you have any questions about the process, I have shown it before. The main thing I would say, the first time or two that you're you're doing this maybe maybe measure your water to paint ratio because like I said depending on the brand some brands of acrylic are going to be thinner than others and so they'll not take as much water you just want it thin enough that it really rolls off the edge of your rock and if you put straight acrylic on there it's going to sit there and it's just going to be a big blob so you're not going to need a really nice acrylic to water down to do this. So this, um, the one I'm using is Craftsmart. I think they just sell that at like a Michaels and stuff, but it's probably the same as like an apple barrel as far as the thickness is concerned. So we'll just keep going. And see, I still have lots of paint in here and I've painted quite a few rocks already. You can see all the ones down here. So I'm just gonna keep going with these rocks. And again, like I said, let me know if you have any questions about the process and I will be back in once I get these done and I clean up my mess. I'll be back on a little bit later, but yeah, you can kind of alternate between places and just keep on going. So um, I always like to say I learn something new with every rock. I'm not gonna lie, normally I'm usually coating big rocks or little rocks, but I just realized just now, instead of pouring your paint back into your container, if you have two of them going, to save yourself the pain of getting it back in here until you're finished, just transfer back and forth between containers because it just makes it that much easier. You just do a rock over here, then you adjust your things on this side. And you can even do small rocks on these big ones too if you have enough holes. You add your next rock over here. Once this is done dripping, I'm just gonna take this one off, add it to my drying sheet, and then I can just pour straight from this one back over here and skip that step of putting it back into my container. So if you've got two going at the same time, you can really get a rhythm going back and forth and save yourself the step of, of aiming and getting it back into here until you're all done and you wanna add it back in here to save it for next time. So I just wanted to jump back on and share with that with you because I just did it for the first time today and I thought, oh my gosh, that makes this an even quicker, easier process. So um, if you didn't watch the base coating, I just did it two minutes ago and then I'll add the link here in a second. So take it easy guys, bye.